So, playing through Final Fantasy VII for the umpteenth time now, um, I had been playing the demo, trying to kill time before the actual remake comes out, and I decided to hop back into the original game. I forgot how much I really enjoy this opening music, kind of just sitting here and listening to it and enjoying it. But, you know, eventually you get tired of it. Um, I actually prefer playing the Switch version of this game, I think. But <laughs> my PS4 is set up so that I can connect to Twitch. So that's where I can actually record, you know, and save the video. Okay. So let's get in. I decided to start a new game because I didn't remember where I was previously. Um, I really prefer these re-releases because of their quote-unquote... What do they call them? Battle boosts? Yeah, like the cheats, where you can always have full health, always have your limit break ready to go, that kind of stuff. Um, having played through the game originally the first time, the right way, I guess, uh, it's nice to just be able to kind of breeze back through it and appreciate the story for what it is, uh, as wild as the original English translation may be. This opening cutscene still gets me. I just love how cinematic it is. And I think that's probably what made this game so special for people when it first came out, was just how much it elevated the RPG genre. Um, ah, good old Eris. Or Aerith. I guess, depending on who you ask. I mean, this was cutting-edge stuff in 1997 when this game came out. This was practically, you know, top-of-the-line stuff. Especially when you consider just a few years before um, you were playing things like Super Mario Brothers or even Super Mario World. So to see something like this was just amazing. What a title sequence. And then it pops you right into the action. So what was so cool about playing this, restarting this right after playing through the demo, was how much of it, at least the early part of the demo, I haven't played the full remake yet, but the early part of the demo is fairly close to what you see here, um, as far as like content-wise. Them jumping off of the trains and attacking the guards and things like that. Uh, although it's obviously way more stylized than the remake than it is here. Oh man, already showing off how badass he is. And even this encounter with these two guards in the original and the remake is almost identical. Down to the moves you can make, the attacks that they do, the items you get from the end of the encounter, the fact that you can level up. So in a minute when I take these guys out after using my battle boosts to constantly have my limit break, going to see that I'll level up from level 6 to 7, and I also should get the potion item, which is exactly the way that it was in the remake, or at least the demo of the remake. So level 7, there's my potion. I didn't pay attention to the gill, so I'm not really sure how that works, if it's the same or not, but it might be. And even this stuff, too, where you have the Biggs, Jesse, and Wedge just kind of hanging out while she opened the door. Although they have a conversation that's slightly different in the remake uh, versus this original. Always go default if I can. <laughs> oh, so good.
There's a lot of downtime here because I was playing late at night. <laughs> Again, like I said, I like to keep the default, so uh, I went with Barrett. Um, I was playing this at, at late at night, so obviously there's a little bit of downtime in <laughs> the selections and stuff because I was falling asleep, which is always fun. Helpful hint there, Barrett. Thank you so much. What if anyone else finds that immersion breaking when characters say things like that? Oh, this little cinematic is great too. And they definitely recreate it in the remake as well. Um, which I really appreciated. But I tell you, the directional pad on the DS uh, DualShock 4 when you're playing a game like this does not always work. You're going to see me run in directions that are not the directions I intended to run many times. Mostly because I couldn't seem to get it to go where I wanted it to go. I don't want to misspeak, but I think the original version of this game didn't have the analog. I think it was like directional, but I can't remember. Or like a four-way instead of an eight-way. But I may be speaking out of turn on that one. I think it's at this point that I decide to put on the no encounters. Yeah. I got tired of the encounters already, even though I only had two. Boy, I tell you, with the remake, uh, at least the demo, like I was saying, the encounter rate in this opening part is intense, especially when you're leaving the Mako reactor after you've, or Mako, sorry, after you've bombed it. And you're leaving out, and you just get hit after wave after wave. It's really intense. I'm not here for a lecture. Kind of wish they had done like a Barrett joins the party type deal, but they've already, you know, done so many things that are outside of a typical JRPG. It's probably for the best. You know, I feel like there should be more security in a place like this. You would think that they would notice that we've been intruding and that they would be sending guards after us. But I guess it kind of fits in with the story beats later about how they want to use Avalanche as a scapegoat. Definitely not a political game. I think you can say that about Final Fantasy VII pretty heartily, that it is not a political game. Uh, it was not originally a political game, and it almost certainly is not a political game in 2020. I'm being facetious, of course. It's a very political game both then and now. Boy, I really pause on this one, huh? Have to be cognizant of that in the future as I play through. <laughs> oh, wow. I guess I don't know how long this goes on. I probably could have edited it out, but at this point, now that I'm talking, I guess I'll just keep it here. Barrett feels very passionately about what they're doing here. I will say that. I know people have talked about this ad nauseum at this point, but to have your opening game, the opening of your game be this action-packed is such a cool choice. You just, you dive right into the action. There's no 
wandering around a town, meeting the neighbor girl, meeting the village elder, whatever like that. You're just fucking right into the action. And that's kind of cool, actually. Here's where I get to struggle again with the directional stuff, which is super fun. <laughs> I wish this did not pop up every time you go to a save menu. Like, the first time you go to the save point, sure, tell me how to save, that's fine. But every single time after that, it does not need to show me how to save. Um, but I guess it does anyway. I also think it's interesting that they give you access to materia here, but you cannot use it, I don't think. Uh, certainly the option to equip or unequip materia is not in the menu yet. Kind of curious as to what Barrett thinks Cloud would be able to pull in this situation, but... Boy, this fight is wildly different in the remake than it is here. Um, the second time I played through the demo, I did a lot better against this Sentinel Scorpion or whatever it's called. Um, but the first time, I got my ass absolutely kicked. Um, I'll be interested to try out the classic combat mode, I think it's called, which is supposed to be more turn-based like this. I prefer turn-based. I mean, I know that there are people out there that definitely prefer action. But give me classic turn-based combat, combat any day of the week. I know what you're thinking. I'm just sitting here spamming my limit breaks. I know. But again, I've played this game, I don't know, a dozen times. Uh, so I'm just trying to play it through one more time as a let's play. My copy of the new game is supposed to be here on April 14th. I think that's next Tuesday. Uh, very excited. But that means I have to go the whole weekend with everyone else having it, trying to avoid the spoilers. Because apparently they do something with the story that people are quite upset about. I know, you're shocked to hear that people on the internet are upset about something, but believe it or not, they are. I saw some, some complaints of the full release of the remake where some of the enemies just feel sp uh, bullet spongy. And I gotta tell you, that first Scorpion boss in the demo definitely felt that way too, where his health was unnecessarily high, it seemed, but I don't know, it could have just been my imagination. I think it's at this point that I switch to the assault gun for Barrett. Yeah. May as well, right? Even if I do have the encounter rate turned off. Back to the save point, and once again, pop up with the menu. Ugh. Like I said, they could have done without that after the first time. It's kind of like how in... Um, is it Ocarina of Time or something? Or some of those other games where every time you grab something, it tells you what it is every single time. It's like, yeah, man, I get it. I know what this is. Thank you. Gotta help Jesse. Can't 
no man left behind or something. No woman. Anyway. Yeah. So here's where I struggle for a few minutes to try to get back to the fucking ladder. Because I swear I'm right in front of it, but clearly not. And then magically it's like I get teleported onto it. I don't know. It could also be the fact that this was almost midnight that I was playing the game, so I'm sure that didn't help. And I turn up the three times speed because, I mean, come on. At this point, there's nothing really happening. We're just getting out of here while this timer kicks down ominously. Or, sorry, counts down ominously. I'm very excited for the remake and how they flesh out these guys. I've heard that uh, they really spent some time delving into the Biggs, Wedge, Jesse, and all those guys. Their motivation, their histories, really fleshing them out as characters. I'm, I'm interested to see how that all plays out. Man. You know, as a kid, it never really dawned on me what kind of damage you're doing in this situation. Um, I think the demo does a better job in the remake of showing you, you know, the power goes out, things like that. I mean, for all we know, there were hospitals in that area that taking out that reactor shut off their power supply. You know, people on life support could have died, whatever. Not to mention the actual explosion could have killed people. The original treats it fairly, I want to say it's almost lighthearted about it. Um, but in reality, you're committing acts of terrorism. Even if you believe that you're doing it for a good cause, you know, you're still potentially harming or maiming hundreds, dozens, thousands of people. I don't know. I don't know how many people live in Sector 5. Or was it Sector 1? Now, this is where I pause again because I was doing something. I can't remember what. I really paused here for a while. Yeah, I, like I was saying, the idea of you going in and pulling up a reactor just to prove your cause is maybe a little bit extreme. At least they're smart about splitting up here. That's a cool little touch. That Loveless poster is up in the train station in the remake when you walk through. I guess it's for a movie or something. I don't, I don't know. I don't think I've ever chosen the other option. What happens if you choose the nothing hay option or whatever it was? Maybe another playthrough. I'll figure that out. Sometimes I fight these guys, or as many of them as it will let me. Other times I just run. This is one of the times where I just, I think I fight the first ones, and then after that I just run away from each of the other ones. Because it, you know, is time consuming. And there's no real benefit to it. This is where I get cross slash. Yeah, that's what I thought.
again, this whole sequence of you going in, bombing the reactor, coming out, running, escaping, and now being surrounded by the police, or, well, sin, you know, Shinra soldiers, is just really, really awesome. And then finally you just hop on a fucking train. It just, ah, uh, so cool. I mean, bear in mind, I was like mm, 11 or 12 when this game first came out when I was playing it, so it seemed a lot cooler then. And didn't really take into account all the people that you're harming or killing with your actions. Oh, I started to slow down here too. Remember why. And part two will be a lot better because I think I'm gonna, you know, actually focus on playing through the game. It's a good point. No, you don't look like a mind reader. That does remind me of one of the cooler parts of Final Fantasy VII, which again I'm sure has been touched on a dozen times. The idea that none of the characters really fit into an archetype, and that with the Materia system, you can make them just about anything. Like, yes, Barrett's a range attacker, um, Tifa's a melee attacker, Aerith is a mage user, whatever, but really, you can put Materia on anyone and turn them into a mage user, or a shield, or, you know, however you want to play it. It's a very flexible system. It's not quite as intense as the FF5 Job system, but it's up there. And I actually prefer it over the Esper system from Final Fantasy VI, which may be blasphemous, but I don't know. What a way to make an entrance. Yeah, that's probably true. I love all this foreshadowing. Um, just on the off chance that someone watching this has never played before, I don't want to go into too much detail what I mean. I just love how they paint Cloud here as this ultimate badass fighter soldier dude. It's just, it's really good. And it comes back to play later in the game. I, and I really hate how post Final Fantasy VII, the original game, kind of undid the character growth that Cloud goes through throughout this game and turns him back into the emo punk, I don't care about anybody kind of Cloud that he is at the beginning of this game, especially Advent Children. Advent Children felt really, really bad as a follow-up to this game where Cloud makes a lot of like personal growth only to turn around and be too cool for school in Advent Children. It's really unfortunate. This is another section that falls victim to my inability to maneuver my character the way I'd like to.
just it's too fucked up to say don't hold your breath. I know Cloud's supposed to be an asshole, but I, I just can't do it. Knowing what's coming for Wedge, I just, I can't. Yeah, see, I'm trying to get over to Jesse, but I keep getting either Wedge or moving up to the next card. There we go. Okay, so it was number one reactor. Trying to visualize what this city looks like is kind of is a little hard for me. I think I will appreciate that in the remake more, being able to actually see what the creators intended. With this idea of a split level, you know, the rich living up top and the poor living below, under, uh, if I may, a damn pizza, it's just kind of hard for me to visualize a little bit. Deep cloud, deep. Yeah, I agree with that. Another really cool opening cinematic within the first 30 minutes of the game. It's obvious that they went all out when making this game the first time around. There's a great retrospective on Polygon, written by, I don't remember his name right now, Matt something? Maybe? Chris something? I don't know. But it's a really great res retrospective all about how this game was developed. Uh, I'll link it in the comments below so you can see it, but it's, it's really worth reading. about all the work they went through to make this game, the different technologies that they used. It was definitely Square at the height of its game. Craft. The height of their craft. That's a better way to say that, maybe. Not to suggest that future games haven't been as good. I, you know, I enjoyed Final Fantasy XII. I enjoyed Final Fantasy XV. Um, what I've played of Final Fantasy XIV, I really liked. And Nine is, of course, my favorite, so... But this was such a huge leap forward from 6. Well, I think that's about it for now. Uh, maybe stay tuned for more later in the future. Um, we'll try to do more videos uh, if you enjoyed this one. So 